Well, hey guys, get excited because in this video, we're gonna be doing a deep dive comparison between one of my absolute favorite skincare products, the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Body Gel Cream, fragrance-free with hyaluronic acid and Trader Joe's Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Body Gel Cream. But before we do that, if you like skincare content from a dermatologist, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell notification because that is going to let you know when my videos go live. If you like short form content, definitely follow me over on TikTok and Instagram. I'm pretty active over there and I often am able to get up little quick reviews a lot earlier than I am here on YouTube. So make sure you're following me everywhere. All right, a few years ago, I stumbled upon Neutrogena Hydro Boost Body Gel Cream, the fragrance-free version, and this has to be one of my most repurchased products. I've probably gone through at least three or four pump bottles of this. It lasts a really long time. It's a great body moisturizer. I also use this on my face, and it is pretty inexpensive, but when I was in Trader Joe's the other day checking out their new daily facial sunscreen which if you missed the review on this definitely check it out it will be linked down below in the description box anyways i saw trader joe's has a hydrating hyaluronic body gel cream and i thought hmm how does this compare to my favorite the Neutrogena. Let's just see how they compare price-wise. The Trader Joe's product is 58 cents per ounce, whereas Neutrogena's is 81 cents an ounce. So Neutrogena is more expensive. Anytime th something is less expensive and more or less appears for all intents and purposes relatively similar, it definitely deserves being tried and tribulated. Tried and tribulated? <laughs> I just made that up. Um, ingredient wise, these are both products that have sodium hyaluronate, the salt of hyaluronic acid, very, very, very popular and common in skincare products. It is a humectant. And what it does is it kind of pulls water from the lower levels of the epidermis up to the stratum corneum. And it basically functions to increase the water content there. And by doing that, the advantage there is that when the water content of the stratum corneum is kind of teed up, the natural process of exfoliating goes much more smoothly. And therefore, it improves skin texture, it can help soften the skin. As part of a basic skincare routine, a moisturizer, because of humectants like hyaluronic acid, really can help just facilitate natural barrier turnover. And you really don't necessarily even need to use an exfoliant. Uh, the internet would have you believe that exfoliating is an absolute must have, that everybody needs to be doing it. Sure, many people benefit from it. But you can also get your skin to exfoliate in a more efficient manner just by keeping up with your skincare routine, basically. Um, but that doesn't sell as many products. Some people out there don't care for hyaluronic acid, whether it be sodium hyaluronate or smaller forms of hyaluronic acid in their skincare products. They have observed that when they use products with hyaluronic acid, or if they use too many products with hyaluronic acid, because it is in a lot of things, cleansers, moisturizers, serums, sunscreens, uh, if they start using too many products with it, their skin becomes irritated easily. I suspect a reason this might occur is because hyaluronic acid can increase the penetration of other things, making them more likely to cause irritation for you. Um, but by itself, it generally is a well-tolerated ingredient or family of ingredients. Now, there's also some discourse on the internet. Can hyaluronic acid dry out your skin, especially if you live in a dry climate. In theory, it can, because as it pulls the water up into the stratum corneum, uh, you know, the water's kind of held there like a sponge, but the water will evaporate out of the skin. And as it evaporates, it can pull out more water. However, most products, especially these that we're gonna be reviewing in today's video, have another family of ingredient called occlusives. And occlusives include things like dimethicone, petrolatum, beeswax. These help to reduce that water loss and trap it in the skin. So it shouldn't be an issue. Honestly, the studies looking at does hyaluronic acid apply to the skin actually do this worsening transepidermal water loss? As far as I can actually find uh, in the research, it's the, the only paper I have ever found that actually shows this is a paper, and you have to look very carefully, uh, where they're using skin equivalents, so not actual human people, but skin equivalent models, and they do show that hyaluronic acid applied to the models alone without any occlusives does increase water loss. 
but uh, really, you know, it's something that gets repeated a lot. But if you actually go and try and find the evidence for it, it's kind of not that robust. Uh, all that to say, as with any ingredient in skincare products, there are gonna be people out there who don't get along with it. If that's you, then these are not for you. These are not products you're gonna wanna use. But it's, it's a good ingredient otherwise. It's used in medicine, topically, for wound healing. They both have sodium hyaluronate and the preservative is the same in these, phenoxyethanol. Now, phenoxyethanol is a preservative. It you know, prevents bacterial contamination. It's a good ingredient to have in there. Allergy to phenoxyethanol is not very common as opposed to the preservative methyl isothiazolinone is a very common preservative people develop allergy to. Anyways, there's a lot of fear mongering around phenoxyethanol online. I have a whole video where I explain it in more detail. It's a safe ingredient, but some people do have some sensitivity to it. Like they notice they use products that have it in there that it stings and burns. If that's the case, then you're not likely going to get along with either of these because that is the preservative in these products. Phenoxyethanol became a lot more popular. I have observed in skincare products with clean beauty, fear mongering parabens. Parabens likewise are more than safe in skincare products. But yeah, I mean, it just kind of starts to restrict the ingredients in products when people unnecessarily fear monger them. Anyways, um, these are both fragrance free as well. Uh, fragrance is the most common allergen in uh, skincare products, cosmetic products. And some people are just sensitive to fragrance in products, redness, sometimes hives. And so these likely it would be okay for you to give a go if that is you. And then also some people have respiratory symptoms with fragrance, so these should be more than fine. Good options if you have sensitive skin, they don't have any ingredients that are commonly irritating like menthol, for example. The, one of the main standout differences between the two products is that the Hydro Boost has petrolatum, which is the gold standard occlusive ingredient. Nothing reduces water loss from the skin to the same extent as petrolatum. A lot of people like to fear monger petrolatum who don't understand that it is not the same as you know gasoline or uh, petroleum products. It is highly refined and has been used in skincare products for a long time and is very well used in medicine as a wound treatment. If you get a burn and you go to a burn center, they're going to be putting petrolatum to, to your skin, most likely. So it is a safe ingredient. I really like it. It's great for people who have eczema and dry skin conditions. Really good at reducing water loss from the skin. However, Trader Joe's does not have petrolatum. It does have beeswax and a few other occlusives, but no petrolatum. Both of these products have dimethicone, which is a silicone oil and is an occlusive and kind of makes things feel a little bit more lightweight. As far as how these perform, I'm just gonna cut to the chase. The Trader Joe's product is very, very lightweight and a lot more aqueous in comparison to the Hydro Boost product. The Hydro Boost product is more of a cream consistency, like a, a gel cream. This feels and is the consistency of a true gel cream, whereas this is more of an aqueous, lightweight lotion. Not to say that this is bad, but if you have dry skin or eczema and you're really looking to get a hold of it, I think that this product is going to help you out a lot faster because of the petrolatum. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I'm rather fond of actually using this product on my face. I use it as a facial moisturizer. I have encouraged you guys in other videos to give body products a go on your face. Oftentimes it's a more cost-effective thing. The only main issue is that a lot of body products are a lot thicker in consistency and texture and can feel very heavy on the face. People who have oily, acne-prone skin don't tend to care for that. Regardless, I have always used this on my face and I love it. It's very good, especially if you have a drier skin type or sensitive skin. However, you may be wondering, what about the Trader Joe's product on the face? You've said it's more lightweight, so how does it go on the face then? Is it more comfortable? Here's the thing, Trader Joe's explicitly says on their website, do not put this on your face. Like, don't you dare put it on your face. Um, and when you get the bottle, it says, do not use around eyes. Apply to body daily or as desired, do not use around eyes. They're, they, they give a pretty strong warning on that, but you know me, I did put it on my face despite the warning. 
and I really like it as a facial moisturizer. Very lightweight, comfortable, hydrating, doesn't burn or sting. You know, some facial moisturizers people find are, are irritating. However, because they are so explicit with don't put it on the face, I would hate to tell you guys something and there be a behind the scenes reason why they don't want people to use it on the face. Yeah, so to be on the safe side, don't use it on the face. That being said, you know, I obviously tried it that way and found that it worked out quite well. The Trader Joe's product, like I said, it's more aqueous. This would be a good option if you are somebody who really just kind of leans on a light lotion, especially in the summer months, just more for the aesthetics of it, having it, it, you know, maybe to soften the skin a little bit, give it kind of a glow. But if you have truly dry skin, irritation prone skin, I, I believe that the Neutrogena product performs a lot better. And I prefer this, I, I really prefer this. This still remains my favorite. However, if you are on a tight budget and you're not really in the market for a heavy duty moisturizer, then try this. It's, it's light, it's comfortable, it's great for summertime. A really good option if you live somewhere like I do that is a swamp of humidity and very buggy, you don't like sticky things, you will like this. That being said, neither product is sticky. They both are pretty relatively fast absorbing, non-greasy on the skin. This one is a little bit, I guess, greasier than this but I think this is a better option for actually helping dry skin. So long story short, I like both of these. I prefer this one. It's just, you know, I like this one better because of the consistency. However, I think uh, this is a great option for humid summer months. The Trader Joe's product is less expensive than the Neutrogena product but not everyone has Trader Joe's in their area. And so if that's you, then I, you know, I always recommend this. I think this is a great product. It's one of Neutrogena's best. And I really hope they never discontinue this because I went on their website, the actual Neutrogena website, and I could not find the fragrance-free one. They have the scented one, um, but they don't have the fragrance-free one on there. You can get it at Ulta, you can get it at Target, you can get it at Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, all of these retailers carry it. And I got this on iHerb, but they have since updated the cover art, <laughs> uh, I believe. I think they've updated the cover art. This is an older bottle, but I think they recently updated the cover art. So I don't know why the fragrance free one is not listed on Neutrogena's website, but I did check their discontinued list because as an FYI, if you go on Neutrogena's website, they actually have, if you put in the search engine discontinued, it'll pull up a page that lists all of their products that have been discontinued recently. So that is awesome because you can, you know, when you, when you have to, you know, bid farewell to a favorite and this was not on there. So fingers crossed they don't discontinue it because they had another, I'm going on a tangent now. They had another moisturizer in the Hydro Boost line, fragrance free body moisturizer that was only sold at Walmart. It was their overnight hydration cream. I loved that and they did away with it. I really liked that product too. I think it had polyhydroxy acids in it. It was good, it was really good. They need to bring that back. Um, if they brought back the exact same formula and rebranded it as something else if they wanted to, because that's, you know, brands always have to keep guessing. If they wanted to do that, I, you know, I would be fine with it. I just want that product back. I really liked it, but totally love this. It's a, it's a, it's a favorite. As a matter of fact, I am partial to the Hydro Boost line. I use a lot of products. As a matter of fact, gosh, I'm really going on a tangent here. As a matter of fact, my lip gloss, my lip gloss is popping. My lip gloss is the Hydro Boost Hydrating Lip Shine. Radiant Rose. These lip glosses are my favorite. The color stays on well, lasts well, leaves the skin of the lips very hydrated, moisturized, moisturized, not irritating. They have a ton of different shades. And the other Hydro Boost product that I swear by, even though it is annoying in the packaging, is their hydrating lip treatment. I will link that down below if you're interested. But yeah, that is my review. Uh, the Trader Joe's product is great, but in my opinion, it's not as good as the Neutrogena one. It's a great option though for the summer and for humidity, sweaty conditions. Um, but uh, otherwise, I prefer the Neutrogena one. Let me know in the comments though. I know a lot of you guys are Trader Joe's shoppers, enthusiasts. Which one do you like if you've tried both? Or do you, you know, were you considering the Trader Joe's one? Hopefully this 
review helped you out. Uh, but if you like this video, check out my sunscreen review from Trader Joe's. I'm gonna put that on the end slate. And please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.